Check it out, check it out, huh? You are here. That's actually precisely where we are, right around this area, which is an area of the Stewart Creek that I have never explored before, right? That is going to be pretty much the main objective of the day. We're going to kind of pick up where we left off yesterday. So for those who don't know about it, you can go to the previous video on this YouTube channel and you can check the fishing session that I did at the West Fork Stones River, right? As always, I am going to be leaving the link of the video above. Well, I didn't really tell you, beautiful ladies and gentlemen, but yesterday uh, it was a little bit discouraging, despite all the different species that we caught over there. I actually flipped over 150 rocks in the West Fork Stones River looking for scopings, and mad toms right there are two species of mad toms down here in tennessee around this area that i don't have yet one species of scoping and what i found nada and then i kind of worked you know the riffles right uh, fast slow deeper shallow looking for different species of the cyprinella genus because there are two species of cyprinella around here that I don't have yet, right? The steel collar shiner and the white tail shiner. Guess what I found? Nada. So I'm looking at my list over here and I still have three, six, nine, 12, 13 different species that I need to look around here. I kind of decided to shift focus from the West Fork Stones River to the Stewart Creek system, right? Which is a smaller and narrower creek in hopes that we actually find them so i'm going to hop down there and pretty much we're going to continue our quest for life listing down here and pick up where we left off i just got down here to the creek as you folks can see even without polarized lenses you can see the contour of the creek as well right my first time at this portion of the stewart creek and i gotta tell you it is really not so different than the west fork stones river right you have these big slabs of rocks that you can kind of stand on. One of my favorite things about the creeks down here and a lot, a lot of rocks down there that can hold potential micros that we don't have yet for the life list. I seen one little bass is swimming around that area. Two long ear sunfish, the Lepomis megalotis, is swimming around here. And I flipped a few rocks over there already and saw one darter that I am not so sure what species it was yet. So I think I'm going to get started again with the Tanago hook. We need to, we have limited amounts of time and we really need to work on the shiners and the darters to find out if there's anything new. Got that Tanago ready. There's a school of shiners, check that out right in front of me man they're feeding like right around this area too oh heck yeah i'm going to cast my tanago around there you're crazy if i'm not gonna do it let's see if they're willing to bite though get it boy get it yummy warm oh they're willing to bite all right got one First fish from the Stewart Creek. We're gonna put it in the photo tank. And since this is a new entry for my Smug Mug fish photo database, that means that all different species of fish that we catch today, we will have to take photos, right? Because we need to identify them species. Let's see what we got over here. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is looking to be, oh man, what is that? Looks like a juvenile compostoma. Yeah, 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 no, this is it. I think it is a central stone roller. I'm going to leave the photos over here in this video so you all can concur or have a different opinion of mine. Feel free to comment below and let me know. Yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing over here the entire day, huh? I already got this one on my life list. But you just never know, right? When you flip that next rock or you encounter the next shiner, if it is going to be something new and unknown.
Ooh, a whole school of shiners over here, right next to this ah, nasty whatever that thing is. All right, let's find out what these are. one finally let's see what was right next to this black gunk over here trying to identify it some type of silvery shiner huh right next to this black gunk ah. man why does it look like hey you know what let's put this one in the tank for now and we're gonna take a few photos mm, for some reason smells like the death out here Kinda smells like the zoo, I ain't gonna lie. Oh, funky. All right, let's check it out, what we got over here. Ah, we got here our silver minnow. Let's do a quick unhook of this fella here real quick. Let me adjust the angle for you folks. There we have it, wet my hands gently. Take that tanago hook out of it. And what do we have here, huh? I think it is, let me see here real quick. Oh yes, this right here, the tail is a dead giveaway. This is a blunt nose minnow, the Pimephales notatus. Look at that, huh? Yes, yes, that's exactly what it is. Right next to the black gunk over here too. Man, I don't know where the water is coming out from the sting over here, but check it out. I mean, yeah, you can see the difference in color. It's all dark over there and right here it's kind of like clear right you can see the boundary of the water i mean there's some funky stuff going on here at the steelwork creek i'm telling you all well all right blunt nose minnow not a new species haven't really found anything that exciting out here yet let's just put this little guy back okay ay 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 i caught one daughter before this little fella while exploring the creek Turned out to be a rainbow dart, the Etheostoma caeruleum, right? Nothing new so far. All right, let's release this one over here. Third species of the day. There it goes, right between my legs. Hmm, let's uh, keep going downstream. Oh, my. Is that what I think it is? I think we just found our source of funkiness out here. There's a school of chickens right ahead pecking on what seems to be a dead animal. Ah, oh, ah, oh, okay. Viewer discretion is advised, okay? They say that curiosity killed the cat, but I'm a pretty curious person myself, so. Let's see what's going on over here. Thanks, son. I'm sorry to disrupt your meal. Your modern chickens, your modern dinosaurs can fly back over here soon, okay? Oh, it's a dead, it's a dead deer, man. Look at that. Mmm, yeah. Smells pretty funky. Ah, oh, it smells very, very funky. And goodness gracious, they did a real good job at this deer already. Look at that. Oh yes, the skull is right over there, as you all can see, right? And uh, I mean, they, they took the hat off already, but they're doing a real, real good job at it. Hey, this is the course of nature, you feel me? Eventually, it's going to feed us all, right? All right, sorry for uh, disturbing your meal, my fellow modern dinosaurs. You all can come back for it, okay? I want the fish. I don't want nothing to do with this kind of stuff right here. area actually does look quite good some vegetation oh, oh fish on fish on boy fish on oh it's them colorful ones that you don't find in the northeast eh the lepomis megalotis this one's actually very worthy of a photo look how beautiful it is right 
Yeah, the long ear sunfish. Only God knows what is strain <laughs> this is going to be in the future, but now that's a that's a juicy one. Not a new species, but always happy to see one of these. A lot of people actually tend to misidentify, I excuse me, the long ear sunfish, right? With the pumpkin seed, the Lepomis gibosus. Both of them kind of have the blue on the face. But don't forget, pumpkin seed usually has a little red dot here on the opercular flap. Not to mention that the long ear, you can see how big that flap is, huh? Right? So there you have it. I'm currently casting a worm over here. I was casting right around this area, right? Because members of the Cyprinella genus, they really like the runs. And you know, the ones down here, the steel collar and the white tail, they do get fairly big. So I tied on a size 10 hook, you know, and since then I've been catching some fish. I got a bluegill over here too, just now, the Lepomis macrocerus. Didn't really include in this video, cause I mean, you know, that one just shows everywhere around the country, right? I'm gonna give a few more casts over here, and if it is not productive, thunderstorms are actually coming. Don't know how well you all can see, but the skies are getting gray. I will start heading back to the bridge area. That's one of the reasons why I chose this spot today, right? So that in case it thunderstorms, we can go under the bridge so that we don't get wet. Look at that, holy smokes, bro. Another bluegill. Look at that, huh? Lot of bluegill after this one piece of wood. Better not tell the locals over here because the locals, they take everything to eat down here as far as, as I've seen. Man, if they knew there's some bream just that size right around this piece of wood, it's game over, you know? Whole school over here. It's gonna be gone. Oh, that was a nice, you, you all saw it. I mean, that that was a decent eating size that we just lost over here too. <laughs> Don't tell the locals. Ah, still smelling that funky smell of the dead deer. Thunderstorms coming, it's time to go. Now it's time to head to the bridge. Oh, heck yeah, mm-hmm. Check this out, huh? Mmm. That's what's up. You probably wonder to yourself, right? Dude, you just got out of the woods and suddenly you in the kitchen eating some lasagna for lunch. Heck yeah. Let me tell you all something. Oh, well, before that, sorry for the angle. Had to shoot the video on this angle because you know I'm not currently using any pants or underwear, right? Too much information. As you all remember from the previous video, American Airlines lost my check bag, so I'm washing my only set of underwear, pants, and shirt over there, right? I'm using a Beat the Heat Bally's Atlantic City shirt that I borrowed from a family member. This is the only time you ain't gonna see me wearing any Under Armour stuff. But anyways, I was at Stewart Creek, got out of the woods, as you all saw in that last clip, and you know, I run for the bridge. But again, it was my first time at the fishing spot, right? I chose that particular fishing spot because I knew there was a bridge over there. So the plan was, okay, when it turns storms, we're just gonna go under the bridge and fish over there. Turns out that bridge is extremely unproductive. There was only one slab of rock under the bridge without any additional tiny little rocks that I could, you know, kick or flip for micros. To top it off, there were, there were not a single school, there wasn't a single school of shiners under the bridge too. I cast a few lures over there while it was raining, not catching anything at all, not a single bite. And then after 20, 30 minutes, guess what? The water started to rise, right? The water started to turn chocolate milk. I was like, oh, heck of hell, nah, man. I called an Uber, I was just like, I'm out of here. So I'm gonna punch the numbers over here. Now you all know me, I love life listing. 
I love fishing and I love exploring. But if there's one thing when it comes to this sport, this craft, that you can't change, well, that is the force of nature. If it is going to rain, it is going to rain, right? Sometimes you book these trips to different states around the country and you make all these wonderful plans, man. Heck yeah, 12 species to go, right? Well, God has other plans for you, right? <laughs> so there you have it. Needless to say, I am going to be down here for a few more days, so you, you are going to see that wonderful black Under Armour outfit a few more times here on the channel. We are going to hit some other places and uh, try to, to catch a few more lifers, okay? So far, we have caught only one, right? The Red Tail, Chub, the Nokomis, Efusus, so we are kind of lacking in that field. All right, I'm gonna finish my lasagna over here. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Hopefully, the next one is going to be a little bit more exciting than this, right? Tight lines and take it easy.